Sauce here. This is a video lesson on rational expressions. Let's remind ourselves what a rational number is first. A rational number is one that can be expressed as a fraction. For example, a over b. a could be anything, b could be anything. It's a rational number if the result can be expressed as a number expressed as a fraction. But we got to be careful, it's not fractions that are rational. It's any number that can be expressed as a fraction. For example, 2 is a rational number. It's not a fraction in this form, it's a decimal number in this form. It's not a number with a decimal point, but it is a decimal number. And can it be expressed as a fraction 2 over 1? So 2 is a rational number. Also, this decimal number that has a decimal point is rational. It's not a fraction when we look at it like that, but 0.17 can be expressed as 17 over 100. So 0.17 is a rational number. An irrational number is one that cannot be expressed as a fraction. And at this level of math, the most popular irrational number is pi. We need a symbol for common irrational numbers that we use because we can't write them down with uh, precision or we can't write them down as an exact value. It's not possible to write an irrational number down because their decimal equivalent will have places in the, past the decimal point that will go on and on forever. We can approximate pi as the fraction 22 over 7, which is a remarkable, a remarkably accurate fraction that is approximately equal to pi. And the decimal equivalent, 3.142, is a very good approximation to the nearest thousandth. It's been rounded. Pi is irrational because we cannot write the whole thing completely exactly. So what's a rational expression? Rational expression is also one that can be expressed as a fraction. But we use this term rational expression when we mean that the parts a and b are more complicated than numbers. They are algebraic expressions themselves. For example, This expression, it's not an equation because there's no equal sign here, 6 times x minus 4 divided by 3 times x plus 2 is a rational expression because the structure of the algebra and the numbers is a fraction. We have an algebraic expression divided by another algebraic expression. We we'll call this a rational expression. And we learn how to deal with and simplify rational expressions because they're fairly complicated. Simplifying rational expressions is often necessary to understand our math or simplify our math to, to get answers. In this case, I could take one step of simplification. I know that 6 can be divided by 3. So we can reduce the part 6 divided by 3 to 2. There are two 3s and 6. The 3 cancels out to become 1, and the factor x minus 4 is still in the numerator, and x plus 2 is still in the denominator. So we simplified this rational expression a little bit. Techniques of simplifying can be easy, challenging. Here's one that's a little more sophisticated and common. Starting with an example of the rational expression x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. I can't see anything immediate that may be simplified by canceling a common factor. This is not in factored form, but I could use the quadratic formula or techniques to factor this quadratic, and it does factor. As a sign problem, it factors x to x plus 1 times x plus 2. And in the numerator, we are lucky. 
that one of the factors in the denominator matches the numerator. So I can think of the numerator with parentheses as its own factor, its own mathematical uh, expression, and see that those two common factors can cancel. They become one, and we can ignore one, but we still need to show a one in the numerator because that's all that's left. This rational expression simplified quite nicely by factoring and canceling. We got lucky that we could find a common factor. One more example. We want to be careful because when we think of rational expressions, and here we have a rational expression. It is a division or a fraction of x plus 3 and the numerator and x in the denominator. When we work with rational expressions, we tend to want to factor and cancel. Looking at this, we might make a mistake and cancel out the x's and leave 3 and be happy with it. But we've made a mistake. That doesn't work. It doesn't work because the x in the numerator is not a factor. It's a term that's joined with another term, 3. The x in the denominator is dividing both those terms. This fraction bar is a grouping symbol. This fraction bar is grouping the x and 3 together because the x in the denominator is dividing both of them. So to proceed, we could write this as the x in the numerator divided by x plus the 3 in the numerator also divided by x. And this x over x becomes 1, something over itself is 1, and we still have the 3 over x, which doesn't simplify. Now in this case, turning this into a 1 kept it as a 1 and part of our answer. In this case, the 1 didn't disappear because we're not multiplying by 1, which can be ignored. We're adding 1, and we're not going to ignore the fact that we're adding 1 to 3 over x.